BJ from Morgan Gumbo. I've got my guest here, Dan Thoreau, better known as Space Biff Online. He does reviewing, and we're talking spicy hot games with Steve. One of the games I've been trying to talk about on the show for the last couple of weeks. I don't think you've played it, Dan. It's called Caritos, and it's from Mebo Games all the way from Portugal. Have you played Caritos? No, it looks fascinating just on that cover. Oh, I'm stumped him. Okay, Is so Caritos. Caritos? Caritos. Like tush. Caritos. Why the sh? Like how Inish is Inish. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I watched a video. I didn't know because this is a this is a company from Portugal, um, and I just I was doing the Essen pre-show with Paul Grogan, and he said make sure one of the games is something that you know don't don't just name you know Uwe Rosenberg's new game. You know let let's come up with some new games. Yeah. And this cover, literally, I picked the game based on the cover because I was like, look at this cover and look at this name. So I watched yeah. the video and the and the owner of the company, Mebo, was very careful to pronounce it. And he said, this is how you pronounce it because we know people are going to struggle with it. Karitosh. And it's like a tosh almost. Karitosh. And what this game is, I'm going to give you the elevator pitch. It is Monsters, Inc. in Portugal. So if okay. you like the show Monsters, Inc., my, uh, Mike and Sully, right? Mike and Sully had to go out, scare people mm -hmm. to generate right. energy for the town. These, this is legends in the northern part of Portugal. I'm instantly intrigued because part of my family is the De Silva family, all the way from Lisboa. And so instantly I was like, oh, wow, northern uh, Portugal, I want to hear about it. There's these legendary creatures that inhabit the spaces between the northern villages. And when the villages go from village to village, they whisper among each other to make sure they build a nice campfire. That's where those black tokens are. Gather in groups. Because if you go out solitary, you disappear. Now, in this game, they don't die, of course, Dan. They just go to a sanctuary for human beings, right? Where the <laughs> where the Kritosh can pay five dollars and get some popcorn and maybe some Roman candy and watch sure. it. So that's the board. It's a beautiful, colorful board. This is one of the examples of, and these are actual Portuguese legends that they've incorporated into the game. You play as these legends, and here's what makes it different. Yes, this is a family weight game. It's a family level game. Think. Uh, Turn in taxis or, or ticket to ride, a little bit more than ticket to ride, of course. But the but here's the difference. Imagine if one of those simple games gave you two unique characters, each with special powers. And those special powers are triggered by the colored cards you play. Very simple to remember, red, yellow, and blue. You play the red card that round, you get to do the red action. Play the yellow card that round, you get to do the yellow action. Nice and simple. You only have three cards in your hand, so the decision tree is pretty easy. But what if, there's Jay Bell playing, what if you play a red card and it's got that cool symbol at the top, that little exclamation point? And then next turn you play a yellow card and it's got that same symbol at the top? Guess what, Dan? You get to play both of your monsters on that turn. Ooh. Now again, limited, this is a family, so the most you can chain up is two actions back to back. But how fun is that trying to plan out man, I really want to play this powerful action on this blue card, but wow, my red and yellow cards match up. If I play them both back to back, I'm going to get to play two actions. What am I doing on the board? Mainly what you're doing on the board is moving those monsters around, trying to grab the villagers, trying to separate them out, and then wherever they're singles, run right over them, snap them up, and score points on them. You do have some hidden goals at the end, and that's what these cards are for. These are little cards that some of them are hidden and some of them you buy from the market. And basically, look, I mean, is the iconography any simpler? It's collect white uh, meeples, get two points for each one of them. Collect a yeah. set of all colored meeples, get five. I, I, didn't even, I haven't played the game in weeks, and I can tell just from looking at the cards what they are. You know, Collect, collect all the same ones and get five points. So you, as you go around the board, and some of the, some of the locations actually match up. You'll see like uh, lighthouses or little villages, and they all have the same pictures. And where they do, your monsters can even bounce between them because they're monsters, right? Yeah. The last intriguing part of the game is the Kuritosh. So it would be fun if we were all just moving our monsters around, gathering villagers, but there's no real interaction there. The last part is those Kuritosh. Oh, no, not this game. Not Florida, <laughs> man. That one I'm not expecting Dan to uh, to <clears throat> review. But um, the Kuritosh, or that's the legendary, legendary creatures there's two of them on the board, and sometimes your card will say that you can move the Kritos. See that blue card there on the upper right-hand corner? That weird symbol you see on there? 
Yeah. That's the Karitosh. So on your turn, you get to move the Karitosh two spaces. Guess what happens if the Karitosh runs into other players or villagers, needs them? It either sends your player out for, or sends your opponent out for a little while, or it makes the villagers disappear. So this is a way to prevent, you know, mom or dad from running up the score on little Johnny. Little Johnny's going to send the Karitosh everywhere. So anyway, it's a fun little one hour wonder of a type of a game. Family friendly with amazing art. And I'll tell you, it's been one of my favorite games we played. I got Jay Bell to play with me and he, he had a blast too. He was like, I wasn't expecting much, but this is actually a pretty cool game out, out there in, um, out from uh, Portugal. What do you think, Dan? Any, any of that sound intriguing to you or Steve? It does. So I have two questions. So first of all, do, do people lose turns? Never. Never okay, lose good. a turn. Okay, mm-hmm. great. In fact, here's the cool mechanic that I wish designers would think about. It is okay in a game to make me lose a turn, but give me something else to do. If oh, your sorry. monster gets eaten and goes to a board, you can always pay campfire tokens to take it out. Or if someone else gets eaten, they bump your monster back out and back onto the board. Now, how oh, friendly nice. is okay. that? Okay. Yeah, that's nice. <clears throat> my, my second question is, what do the colors of meeples represent? Uh, I would say that the colors of the meeple represent the five warring factions of Portugal that date back Ooh. to pre... No, I have no idea. No, really? They're just, oh. they're just colors. I was hoping you were being serious. That would have been awesome. You know, uh, that's not a good hope on this show because that's rarely the case. Um, <laughs> rarely the case. Only when my lips are moving can you tell if I'm lying. Um, the... The colors are just, yeah, unfortunately in this game, they're just, they're just colors, just different mm-hmm. colors, five, five okay. different on there. But, but to, to, to kind of fall on that, the monsters that you see, I've only shown you two. There are a ton in the game. I want to say they're like 12 or 14 different monsters. So oh, wow. no, I, I played the game three or four times now. And yeah, four times now, all different player counts, except I haven't played four, unfortunately, because of COVID. But I played two and three multiple times. And it's always been different because it just depends on what monsters come out. They each have unique powers. Some of them jump around the board better. Some of them move farther. One of them even moves like the Kritosh. He, this monster, I forgot what her name is, uh, Sally the Lost Soul. Sally can roll through people and send them into that, into the, off the board. So she's yeah. sort of like a Kritosh. But mm. Kritosh, uh, something pretty cool? Yeah, I would play this. Yeah, it looks interesting. That is Kritos from Eagle Games. Steve, anything? You you had me with the, the sales pitch, Monsters, Inc. in Portugal. I'd be <clears> interested <throat> in seeing how the actual mechanics and all flow and play. Um, and and if, you know, if if the kids in, that you play with really do understand that, you know, this person's not really being, you know, removed from the game. They're just going off to the farm upstate. Um, <laughs> they're living with grandma and grandpa for a little while. Um, it, it seems like it could work. They're going to the Kiritosh farm to jump with the rabbit. Okay. <laughs>